welcome back. Jonathan here with another Vectorwitz tutorial and today something a little bit different. We're going to be looking at 3D modeling the Castel de Monte in Andrea, an amazing castle that I was inspired by. I really wanted to see how I could explore modeling this in Vectorworks and I wanted to share this with you as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's get started with this new tutorial. Okay, so I'll put the links in the description for this amazing Castel de Monte and Andrea. And the very first thing that I've actually done is downloaded a couple of images from the internet, just um, a few images you can see, and I've just imported these into Vectorworks as reference material. So this is actually quite important. I've also downloaded the plan, and very fortunately I was able to find one that I had a scale bar on, so I could actually scale this up in Vectorworks and that meant that I can actually start to trace over. You'll notice that I'm actually tracing over using the polygon tool and there's a great uh, tool here which you can do sort of six or eight sided polygons. Basically I'm just going to select those shapes and clip surface then I'm going to get my push pull tool so shift r is the shortcut there and I'm just going to basically push up the uh, initial sort of octagon if you like for this castle here. Now I'm just sort of estimating the heights. I don't have much information on these heights um, themselves. So using these reference images, I'm just kind of gauge uh, how big these sort of volumes might be um, relative to things like doors and things like that. So I've extruded this main part of the building about 18 meters for now, and I can always change this later. So now I'm gonna basically work on these um, sort of turrets, if you like, using again my octagon tool. And the very first thing I'm actually going to do, even before I make it 3D, is make this into a symbol, which I've called Tower. Now, basically, making symbols is an amazing way to model. Now what I can do is get my Duplicate Array command, and if I select the Duplicate Circular Array and get the angle correct, you'll see that I can actually basically um, take those symbols and extrude them around. So if I just double-click into the symbol, and edit the extrusion depth, suddenly I've got this lovely uh, turrets all around the model, as you can see. Okay, so next I'm gonna double click into that symbol once again. I'm gonna use one of my favorite new 3D tools in the latest Vector, it's 2024, the offset edge tool, which is absolutely amazing. So basically you can see I've offset that entire edge, uh, 200 mil, let's do the same again, bring it in a bit more, maybe say 400 this time, and then just sort of push and pull up. Now you can see very quickly, I've created this nice sort of sculptural edge here. Um, what I want to do now though, is put some fillets on and some chamfers. So I'm gonna to go to the chamfer edge tool, select the entire edge there and basically apply a nice chamfer. Now what you'll notice is because I'm working within the symbol, um, basically that means I only need to edit one of them and they all update. So just having a quick look at my reference images just to see what next we're gonna work on. Basically, just gonna pull this surface in here, push that down or up a little bit, um, just to kind of like create a little sort of wall, if you like, for that castle top. Okay, it's looking good. So we'll have a spin round using the flyover tool as well. And I'm at this stage gonna kind of create a couple of classes. So basically that means that I can turn off my 2D drawing as my reference and Let's also have a look at things like the um, shell solid tool. So with the shell solid tool, I can basically hollow out that entire castle. So this is pretty good for the next stage, as you'll see. Now there's some nice openings. Um, so I want to do a bit of work on both the door, the windows, and these openings here. So a really good little tip here is to put the model into a um, multi-view. And this means that you can actually kind of have your reference images in some panels, and basically then modeling in the other panel. So if I actually close down some of those extra panels, I should be able to go almost sort of full screen. And basically you can adjust these panels how you like and set them up, split them vertically, uh, divide them horizontally and that kind of thing. So let's just close that panel once again. And you can see I've got a really nice little reference, couple of images there. Plus in my main window, I've got my modeling uh, environment itself. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is basically just try and see if I can snap to the midpoint there. Um, don't worry too much because there's always different modes of the rectangle tool that you can use. Um, you can see that I use the U key to modify the tool there. So I'm just doing a couple of rectangles to begin with. Let's duplicate, rotate these, offset them. And basically all of this is just currently 2D drafting. So when I'm ready, I can right click and add surface. Okay, so that's just created the sort of form that I'm looking at in that reference image. 
We'll extrude it out a little bit. And now what we'll do is actually punch some openings in it again. So here I'm using the rectangle tool on that third mode, which is actually quite a useful one. It means that I can basically draw on that surface, typing in the numbers of the size of the door. Let's just eyeball in the scale, I think. And I think I'll probably go for an arc. Uh, let's get the right mode of the arc tool, raise that up and let's add surface. Good, okay, so now I'm ready to basically push pull um, or extrude rather. So let's do a negative extrusion, select both shapes, and when I'm ready, I can actually select and right click and subtract solids. So you can see we've created this nice arched opening. Now if I double click in, I can actually make a copy of the uh, subtracting piece and basically offset inside a little bit more. Okay, so let's now subtract this from the main area. Um, subtract solids again will now make that sort of double arch through into the main entrance of the building if you like. So just to finish this off then, I'm going to go for a couple of uh, chamfers on these corners. So you can see the really nice thing with the chamfer tool is you can just hold shift down and select all the various edges you require, click the tick. If you do want to modify that chamfer you can uh, modify it afterwards. So this is looking quite good. Okay, so let's keep working on this entrance area. I can see that there's a couple of uh, sort of horizontal elements that project out. So I'm gonna use my rectangle tool. Just make sure um, I'm drawing on that automatic face and that's a pretty good mode actually for doing that. Let's extrude this out, say 300. I'll go to top plan and let's just use uh, duplicate, rotate and stretch. Just to kind of put those in, let's use the mirror tool. Select all those three elements and then of course add solids. Now I can basically uh, maybe chamfer those edges again. Let's get all those invisible edges by holding down the B key. Just make sure I get the right edges there. Click the tick and you see I've got those nice chamfers that I can adjust. Good, so we'll put that into front view. Let's duplicate it up and you can see we've added a really nice little element of detail. So I'm not trying to copy the uh, model of the castle exactly. I'm doing my own sort of slight interpretation. I'm really just showing you how you can use a mixture of sort of 2D drafting on the face of that model and then do things like extrude it and subtract. Now the really nice thing is if you copy, you can also paste in place and reuse the same piece a number of times. So here, I'm just gonna go and make sure that I do subtract solids. Okay, so what I'm now gonna do is just have a look at that window in a bit more detail. And again, let's use the good old chamfer tool to put some nice splayed reveals on. That looks a lot more um, interesting. So next I'm gonna go and work on these um, turrets a bit more. Now the real beauty of this, because I made them symbols early on, it does mean that I can basically carry on working on these um, as required. So I'm just gonna kind of offset this edge here and basically let's see if I can just extrude this up but without subtracting this time. Now I can actually get my chamfer tool. Um, I'm actually gonna select the whole face. That makes it very easy to chamfer all the edges of that surface and then post adjust. Okay, so next up I want to add a bit more detail again to the tower. Really great way to do this is double click, copy out one of the shapes, just sort of paste it in place. Um, just make sure that you actually bring it in and drop it into the symbol. And then basically I can just use my offset tool to offset this outwards up so slightly and then extrude it up once I've done the clip surface command. And you'll see where I'm going with this. So I've created this nice little detail here and basically I can kind of keep going with this and use my uh, extracting tool this time on the top surface. So now we'll just do the same thing once again. Let's double click the offset tool and basically offset outside. Use the shape to basically now extrude and let's do uh, say 500 extrusion. Now you see that this is a really great way to add more detail. A lot of the geometry is already contained within the model. Okay, so next up I would like to hollow out this tower so that when I push some openings into it, um, we'll actually see those. So to begin with, I'm just gonna basically go into the main surface and click on that main element of the tower and use the shell tool to hollow it out. So this should mean when I start to punch an opening, for example, let's just kind of click and draw some openings. Let's extrude this opening, uh, copy it down a few times. And then when I'm ready, I can actually change the size as required. So very easy to do this sort of very accurate sort of little arrow slits. And we'll basically just drag two of those down, change the size of them a little bit. And now when I'm ready, I'll actually get into the extrusion stage. So I do quite a lot of drafting in 2D before I extrude. 
Now once again, I've got the duplicate array function set up already. Uh, I can basically find the middle of that shape, select all of those uh, cutouts if you like, and then with one command I can subtract solids. So now look at the amount of detail. Because I've been working in those symbols, um, whatever I do to one of them, it will do to many of them. So I'm going to see if I can kind of like do some nice little kind of setbacks on these arrow slits in here. Basically what I want to do is select these edges. Uh, I'm going to select all four edges and click the tick and basically that sort of works quite nicely. So when I know that I'm happy with this, um, I'm going to see if I can apply that to something else. However, I decided that would take a bit too long. So what I'm actually going to do is extrude a shape. Okay, so just bear with me. I'm going to basically go in and now taper this shape. So go into the group. So let's get behind this thing and I'm going to use my chamfer tool on the window on the back of this thing that we'll be subtracting. So let's select those four edges. Okay, so that's looking good. Let's increase the chamfer. Okay, so you see I've made this nice little wedge piece here. Now, all I need to do is basically copy this around the model. So let's just kind of duplicate it and you can see there it is. So if we do the duplicate array command, that will copy it all around the center of the model. And there is those uh, shapes that we can now do one single subtraction and make sure we just retain the original object. So the wonderful thing is now we can just double click back in, duplicate those shapes and just repeat the process as many times as we want to. So the really amazing thing about modeling within symbols is when you pop back out, you can see suddenly all of them get updated very rapidly. So let's move on to another little stage. Um, I really fancy just seeing how this might look with some stone texture. So I've gone into my resource manager, command R remember, and I'm just going to see if I can find any nice stone that I could use. Um, you've got to search around a bit. Some of the uh, stones look pretty amazing, but others you might want to modify yourself. So basically let's apply that surface and let's just see if we can kind of get that scaled up a little bit. Don't forget to change the mapping type if required. So you know maybe that's interesting. I'll see how that looks in a minute when we've done the other textures as well. So I can just drag and drop those textures and remember I've made that entrance now into a symbol. So I do need to actually apply the texture to that as well. Okay, now if I do want to edit that stone, I'm not that completely happy with the colour. I could actually go into the Vectorwitz Renderwitz texture and apply a little bit of maybe colour into it, um, almost like a filter. So this is quite nice in that you can actually kind of edit the tones of those textures and sort of see how that looks. Now I'm not completely happy with this yet, but you can see I'm just playing around just to kind of get a bit of a feel for how this might work. The good thing is, it doesn't matter, you can always undo if it doesn't work out that great. Let's try a different technique. This time I'm going to try the image effects. Now this is looking promising. This is almost like having a mini Photoshop editor within your software. Okay, so I'm now much happier with the kind of like more brownie stone material that I've made from that texture just by editing directly in Vectorworks. Um, so let's basically duplicate around the entrance symbol that I've made. So you can now see I've got this sort of nice entrance uh, feature on all four areas. The great thing is I can double click or go edit features, go back into my model and let's select that thing that basically subtracts those entrances. Let's repeat that round and we'll delete every other one so that now I've got those four. Let's do the same with this little entrance, uh, this window rather. And we'll delete every other one again. So let's see, I should just have those in every quadrant rather than every single section of the octagon. So very, very rapid to do and very, very quick. So we can actually adjust things like the lighting and the uh, shading. And I just want to kind of see how this looks with a heliodon in. Just very briefly, now if you're going to put heliodons in, um, these are really good sort of realistic sort of lighting for different locations in the world. Let's see if we can kind of find the true location. So we'll go to Spain and basically drop that in. And here we go, at a certain time of the day, we can actually program in the exact shadows that you would see. So just make sure you put heliodons in a new layer that you can turn off. Now another really cool thing is in Vectorwitz we can just turn off the textures. So even though we're modeling with textures when we want to preview, we can actually just turn those off. So now I'm basically going to go into my model, uh, do a bit more work on some of these features. 
And before I actually duplicate this around, I decided I want to kind of like copy it quite a few more times actually. So let's select all of those, drag them down a few times, and you can see how easy it is just to edit that solid subtraction and just keep going back in. So we've done a bit more work on the windows. I've added some nice surrounds, duplicated those around using the array system as well. So next up, I'm gonna carry on working on these towers. Now remember these are symbols, so I've just double clicked to go into the symbol. So I think what I'm looking to do is basically put some castellation on these actual turrets themselves. Um, basically gonna extrude a shape. I just wanna kind of get that in the right position. So what I've decided to do is turn on the automatic plane Okay, so let's just go and remember if the automatic plane isn't working, you haven't turned it on. There we go. So let's just turn that on, draw centrally outwards, project it out a little bit more just so it's kind of full width here. And basically, let's sometimes easier just to do in plan. Let's extrude it down. And basically, there we go. That's really cool. So now I can do the subtract solids. Okay, just double click. I needed to make that ever so slightly bigger. Um, so don't worry, just stretch it out a bit more. Okay, and now um, in plan view, I can just double click back in. Now I can start to use this piece by using things like the mirror tool. Let's mirror across a little bit. In fact, let's do basically just mirror across and move the object and then we'll use the mirror tool to go back the other way. So finding the center is very easy. Now I should be able to use the duplicate array command once I've adjusted and yep, that's looking good. So once you're happy with one section, make sure you just go back into the history, you know, use that duplicate array command, and then there we go. You know, look how easy and fast that is to create all those lovely sort of castellated um, sort of tops to the terrace, as it were. Okay, so I'm just gonna basically extract a few more surfaces, do a few extra nice little details here that I'm extruding up. Very, very easy to add this detail in those symbols. And the real beauty of this is because all of those are symbols, they'll all update, of course. So let's use some all offset edge tool and basically put a nice little kind of wall on that section there. Now it's starting to come together. Um, if I do go back in and turn the textures on, I might just need to update some of my textures using my eyedropper tool to copy those across. And of course those windows which are new, let's apply that new texture as well. Just dragging and dropping. So already it's starting to really come together. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this modeling exercise. It's been super fun to do. And basically what I might do one day is take this into twin motion and do something else with it. Well, good, okay, so now I'm gonna do one fine little bit of enhancement. I'm gonna to go to Crea AI, which is a AI image generator and enhancing software. And basically I've loaded in my image and here you can see the final results using Crea AI, which I'm gonna download. And here we go, we'll just display this at the end of the video. So thanks ever so much for watching everybody. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.